Bart, is the recording on now? The recording has started. Okay, normally I see it up at the top, but I don't see it today. But I guess it's one of those technologies. Um, we'll go ahead and get started. I now call to order this work session of the Anchorage Assembly on board and commission appointments. <coughs> it is Thursday, November 4th, 2021. We are noticed from 1 to 3 p.m. Madam Clerk, can you call the roll, please? Yes, Madam Chair, I can tell you that your um, audio is cutting in and out. Um, but calling the roll, um, Suzanne LaFrance. Here. Christopher Constant. Here. Jamie Allard. Here. Forrest Dunbar. Here. Crystal Kennedy. Here. Cameron Perez Verdia. Here. Pete Peterson. Present. Austin Quinn Davidson. Um, Austin, we couldn't quite hear you. You want that one? I thought we'd do both. We'll put this one under, and then we'll put the, yeah, we'll do Don't both. Don't believe Austin is here. Okay, um, I'm going to go on. Um, someone needs to mute themselves um, uh, on the, uh, in the meeting. Felix Rivera? Present. John Weddleton? Here. Meg Zalatel? Here. You have a quorum. So, Suzanne, are you frozen? It appears that the chair is frozen, so um, I'm going to go ahead and offer the floor to the administration. We've asked a series of questions from the administration, and we're hoping for uh, their prepared answers. Uh, you have the floor, Ms. Domboski or Mr. Shanigan. Thank you, through the chair. Uh, this is Amy Domboski, municipal manager. I want to start by thanking the administration for taking or for um, the staff for taking such uh, care in this process. Um, we we also want to thank the assembly for their dedication and interest in boards and commissions. As we all know, the previous uh, um, acting administration and before that, the Berkowitz administration through those uh, through the last couple of years, boards and commissions has been seriously underserved. There's been so many vacancies and um, terms that have expired that just, you know, we're catching up to now. And I think it's really a great thing that the assembly and the administration both have an active interest in filling these seats and having the public participate in this way. So with that, I wanna start with some of the, um, we're, we will facilitate today, we will get you the final written responses to many of these questions that were asked by the assembly. Um, I wanna start by, by saying that established in charter section 507B, the mayor appoints the members of boards and commissions unless otherwise specifically provided for in the charter. Appointments are subject to the confirmation by the assembly. The assembly has asked us a series of questions in writing regarding process, outreach, boards and commissions, vacancies, uh, discrepancies in onboard versus what's being submitted. And again, I just want to go back and tell you that as we walked into this uh, situation, which was quite, quite frankly very unorganized and not kept up, um, what we found is there was a lot of discrepancies in onboard, which is the, the um, online system to receive applications and to track boards and commissions. It was simply not accurate. So we've been going through the process of vetting that, making sure that people who are listed on there, they had matching AMs that were approved by the assembly to ensure the terms were accurate. Um, Mr. Chair, did you want me to go question by question through here and give you a synopsis of what our written summary will be? Or did you yeah, want absolutely. me to? 
No, that would be very helpful. Give a framework for how we begin the conversation, and I'm monitoring the chat if there are questions. Okay. And our, our structure today was just to give you a basic uh, a setup, and then we were going to go through the agenda board by board as they're on the agenda. That way we can answer questions specific to each board as they come up, which is going to be on your Tuesday's agenda. So the first one, um, this, the first question from the assembly is what outreach and advertising was done to recruit new appointees? What outreach was done to ensure a broad uh, community representation? I'm just summarizing the questions because I don't think you want to listen to me read all day. Um, <laughs> And the response from the administration is that it was very simple. All residents had an opportunity to apply via, via onboard, which is again, the application system the municipality has. Outreach was conducted through the municipal website, social media, the transition team and community councils. Oh my God. Was that a question? Just one, no, just one second, Ms. Dombowski. Whomever it is that is talking, has a child there, Sounds like it's fun, but it would be great if you muted so that uh, the speaker can be heard instead of the side conversations. Thank you, everybody. All right, uh, the second question the assembly uh, asked is there are 29 people whose terms expired in October 2021 who were not reappointed. How many of those submitted applications or indicated to their board or commission that they intended to serve out a new term? Can the assembly have access to those applications or all existing members adequately informed that they would need to reapply for their positions? Um, and the general response again, I'm gonna just summarize here. It's not been the practice of any executive branch prior to this one to advance the resumes of people who were not nominated. It has been the intent of this administration to notify members that were not reappointed Did we lose you, Ms. Domboski? Did all right, I'm still here. Sorry. We oh, erroneous muted. I don't know where you lost me. Did you hear my answer? Uh generally, yes. That okay. it's not been the position of any administration you're aware of to forward any resumes that were for people not appointed, and you forwarded those who you believe should fill those positions. Yeah, exactly. And also the second part of that that I think might have cut out was um, we are continuing the process of sending out thank you letters and notifying folks that are not reappointed. Um, that is a process that is ongoing today. Um, many of the people though, there are a number of people that are being reappointed that, so they'll continue in that role. That the yeah, that did go through the onboard process. Okay, number three. This was the question from the assembly. Several boards and commissions have very specific requirements outlined in municipal code for who fills each seat and sometimes technical requirements for appointees. Do the new appointments maintain these requirements? Can the administration note on the AMs which seat each appointee is filling similar to how it is shown in the Anchorage Memorial Park Cemetery Advisory Code section on onboard? This was done in some cases, but not all. While this has not always been done in the past, now that the onboard system is set up, it would be a good practice for the municipality to maintain. The administration's response is very simple. You know, thank you for the recommendation. We're happy to consider it moving forward. Question number four. There are 23 people who expire prior to 2021, but according to onboard, that person was still serving, perhaps unaware that they had expired. Some of these reappointed, but some were listed on the administration's appointment documents as vacant and new appointees were put forward. A, of those, how many were still active and participating in 2021? B, how many reapplied for their seats? C, how did the administration determine which members to reappoint and which ones to replace? The administration's response. Thank you for the questions. Data was not recorded in a manner to easily track how many are actively participating at 2021 at this time. Some people were serving against code, frankly, without being confirmed by the assembly. The appointment for boards and commissions are solely the discretion of the mayor. That process is exclusively, exclusively a function of the executive branch. Number five, the staggering is off for the election commission. Would the administration be willing to readjust the new appointment for seat four for one year to expire in 2022 
to bring the commission back into alignment with the code to have staggered terms. The response from the administration. Thank you for the question. The administration is reviewing all board and commission terms for legal alignment with the members terms. Question six. Jessica Ope was appointed to the Health and Human Services Commission on 32321. CAM 183-2021, but does not appear in onboard. Can we assume that she is filling seat number six? Answer from the administration, yes. If it is confirmed that code was followed and that a member was confirmed by the assembly, she will be filling that seat. Again, these are preliminary answers that I'll finalize for you, Mr. Chair, and have those in writing for you by the end of today. Um, again, I just want to I just want to reiterate the amount of work that um, Mr. Shanigan and uh, Miss Williams and Miss Graham have put in to trying to sort out um, the the data that was actually imported into on board prior to this administration's um, arrival has been a, a voluminous effort. We're looking forward to making sure all that data is accurate and the assembly has really good information. I do want to point out the administration has also developed some informational memorandums that we anticipate putting on the addendum to the agenda tomorrow to complement uh, your meeting on Tuesday, which we have it laid out in a color coded fashion, which I think will be a lot easier for assembly members to digest. We recognize there's just a significant amount of appointments. So we're trying to make it as easy for you as possible to get through. Those AIMs are in their final stages and should be uploaded to on board to, or on base today and hopefully will be on the addendum <coughs> tomorrow. With that, Barbara, would you please upload the um, agenda and we'll start going through boards and commissions um, on the agenda and be willing to answer questions for each of the appointees. It, it appears Chair LaFrance is back. Chair LaFrance, are you able to manage the meeting now because of technical issues? Uh, if not, it's fine. I'll continue. Before we proceed, I see that there's a question from Ms. Zalatel in the queue. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the handout that was provided for today's meeting by the clerk's office, I noticed on the chart one um, board or commission not listed, and I was just curious if a review of that particular entity had um, occurred, and that's the Zeba. Um, because I've heard some inquiries about <clears throat> particular appointments related to Zeba. Um, and if um, and I can send those questions, I apologize for the lateness um, offline, but I just wanted to ask if it had been reviewed um, and if there aren't any proposed changes to it because it's not on the list. Yeah, I don't think we have any or at this time, Ms. Zalatel, I don't I don't recall that we've put forward any nominations for Zeba at this point. If we haven't, then they'll be forthcoming if if anybody's due for reappointment or appointment. Yeah, there I believe there are some um, reappointments or two vacancies, and that's why I was um, just curious um, and wasn't sure how it would operate in the interim because that is an adjudicatory board and they need to make a quorum. Absolutely. It, it's our intent to fill all boards and commissions. And so um, again, you know, there was just so many vacancies and expired terms. We had to start somewhere and um, it, it's an ongoing process and we're trying to um, get through it as fast as possible, but as slow as we must to make sure we're accurate. Okay, I appreciate that. And I'll send the specific inquiry about Zeba um, so that you, it, it's on your radar. Thanks. Perfect. Thank you so much. Next in the queue is Mr. Dunbar. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, so we could, let me think here, we could wait until we're discussing the library board, but I think I prefer to ask it now because it, it doesn't, the question doesn't really relate to the person that's being appointed. It relates to the terms. And this is the only one that I see on this list, on the documents provided on page three, um, where it's listing people and when their terms expire. Um, one of them, uh, Ms. Lang, uh, she, um, 
her term expires in 2022, uh, and yet she's being replaced. And, and so I'm wondering um, if the uh, if the administration can can speak can speak to that. That is her her um, term does not seem to be up, and she's being uh, replaced. Wait, oh, put it, put it back on. Uh, thank you, Mr. Dunbar. We'll cover that when we get to the library board. Um, but I don't believe the information that you have is accurate, but that is something that we are prepared to discuss as we go through these boards, board by board. Okay. Next in the queue, we have Mrs. Zollard. Thank you, um, Vice Chair. So um, this is for the administration. <laughs> When, and, and this might be one of those questions that you want to review as we go through, but my, my question is, when you have individuals on commissions and boards, are you, one, running it through um, whether they're qualified or not through our human resources director, and two, um, we're making sure all these individuals are qualified by code as well? Um, question so the, fir the first answer to your question is no. The, the HR director does not have a role in vetting boards and commissions or screening those applicants. The role of screening the applicants for boards and commissions is the director of boards and commissions. And in this case now, um, Mr. Shanigan, director of legislative affairs has taken over that role. Um, previously though, it was um, Stephanie Williams who was the director. So it's an internal process within the mayor's office, Ms. Allard. And um, that process, you know, we accept applicants through on board and then code, we, we filter to which board they're interested in. And then we look to see if there's vacancies. Is that person, are there code requirements relating to that board? If so, does that person qualify pursuant to the code requirements? So that's the typical process, but it's not an HR process. Okay, thank you. Mr. Presvridia is in the queue. Thank you. The question is for the administration. I'm I'm hoping I appreciate the answers to the questions that you provided earlier. I'm hoping you can uh, provide a little bit more detail as to the 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 process and the rationale, um, and maybe even you know if there is some sort of uh, rubric or or set of guidelines that you use in order to make a decision about replacing um, someone with someone else, and and and. Particularly, what I'm 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 in interested in, and in some cases concerned about, is when there is a significant amount of institutional knowledge, um, when there is um, when there is uh, you know uh, just someone with with a real vast amount of, of of experience being replaced by someone who has limited experience, and so I'm 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 just wondering if you can speak to a little bit about some of the the sort of rationale you use for replacing um, members of these boards that would help us to understand in some some cases i know we'll go through specific examples later but i just was hoping you would provide something that would allow us to understand your process thank you thank you um and as someone who has served multiple executives now at this point and served on the assembly when there's been multiple mayors in appointments are at the discretion or appointments are made by the mayor. So the, the decision is um, when the mayor looks at boards and commissions and he looks at the applicants, the mayor in his sole discretion has the ability to, to, to appoint. And you know, whatever, if the mayor looks at somebody and says, this person looks more qualified, or if he looks at somebody and says, you know what, it's time for a fresh perspective, Whatever, whether it was Mayor Berkowitz or Mayor Sullivan or this mayor, Mayor Bronson, every mayor has the discretion to choose their own appointments. Um, we actually look for, of course, qualifications. We look for diversity in opinion. We look at diversity in background, professional experience, geography. You know, we wouldn't want a board or commission, uh, for example, I don't know, take, take any board, the platting board, and you wouldn't want everybody on the platting board to be from Eagle River. So we try to we try to institute balance and make sure that there's a, you know, it's a dynamic board that can look at issues from multiple perspectives and have a lot of experience. But the primary factor in appointments is what are the code requirements? 
And once those code requirements are met, then it's truly at the discretion of the mayor because by charter, he's the one who gets to pick. That's how they're that's how they're selected. And that is a great question. Thank you, Mr. Perez for the Thank you. Thank, thank you for the answer. I appreciate it. So I have a question as well um, before we move on into the specifics of each candidate and board. Um, was the criterion used whether or not an individual made a contribution or made a statement of support or opposition to any political candidate used as a factor by any of the staff in making the determination of who was to be appointed? No. Thank you. It, Mr. Constant, that's a wonderful question. I just want to follow up with that. Um, no political uh, contribution requirement or contemplation was made, nor was any voter registration pulled and evaluated. That was not a criteria. The mayor has made it very clear. He wanted good people to step up and serve, whether it was in his administration or boards and commissions. And at no time has he given direction to use any sort of political litmus test. Thank you. Let's proceed into the commission by commission review. All right, thank you. Um, I don't know, Mr. Chair, if it's possible to blow up the screen just a little bit more so we can see the agenda a little bit better. And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Terrence Shanigan and he will start walking us through each board and commission and we'll be happy to take questions. Thank you. So the first one is the Municipal Airports Aviation Advisory Commission. No. Oh. They have 11A up there. Do we go to 10? Okay. Do you want to do you want to back up? Um, can you roll up the agenda to I, the 10 items? We're at 11 now. Yeah. Which agenda item number, Ms. So, first one, I think, would be the Public Safety Advisory Commission. 10 D6. 10 Delta 6, Barbara. Got it. Thank you. All right, Mr. Shanigan. For the record, Terrence Shanigan, uh, with Boards and Commissions for the Administration. Uh, through the chair, the uh, first item here is 10D6, which is public safety advisory. And you can see that we have a total of four vacancies in this uh, in this board, consisting of seat four, five, six, and seven. Uh, there's an identification of seat five and six are vacant with expired terms for Oh, correction, I'm on the wrong one here, so let me just flip to the. Okay, I'll start that over. On the Public Safety Advisory Commission, um, and the municipality uh, code is uh, chapter 4.60.270. Uh, this board has nine seats. I've identified that we have three uh, vacancies on that board, seat five, seat six, and seat seven. Eight. Or seat eight. eight. Uh, the administration uh, has identified three candidates for that. Uh, seat five, Evan Budd. Seat six, Keith Montanock, and seat eight, Jeremy Price. All three of those seats would have terms that would commence effectively October 15th or the date that we uh, that they would be confirmed, um, 2021 through 10-14-2024. And those resumes were uploaded into Onboard. So hold, please, I have a question for Mr. Dunbar. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Shanigan. So you said that these folks, if they're appointed, their um, their seats will go through 2024. But here on our on our documents, it says the seat terms expire in 2022. So which is it? So are, are we are we sort of back in the um, 
in the I think which was the prior administration's position too that once you appoint someone from that moment forward they have a three-year term regardless of when that sort of staggered term was scheduled to expire uh through the chair this is sammy graham chief of staff that's not necessarily true um you can uh make an appointment for two years you can make it for three years they can fill a vacancy that's only open for one year um and it it just depends on yeah the, the board the yeah, the board vacancy. It also depends on the code. Some some boards and make and commissions are only for one year commitments. Mm -hmm. Inter okay, so I, <clears throat> D. Oh, so D just said in. I believe the staggered terms are required by code. Um, so I I guess my question then for Miss Ennis is, are these um, are these seats go going to expire in 2022? Or are, as Ms. Sh Mr. Shanigan said, are they gonna go till 2024 if these are three year staggered terms? If the staggered terms are required, then we would have to figure out the numbers. I, I don't know them offhand for this particular uh, commission. <laughs> What's that? Uh, this is Terrence Shanigan. Uh, Ms. Boat, those seats uh, for those three seats will expire in 2022. So they are uh, seat five, seat six, and seat eight will expire 10 14 2022. Okay. So are we ex are we appointing them through 2024 or through 2022? I misspoke 2022. Okay. And that's according to the AI or the uh, AM. Yeah, I was that, that's where I got that number was from from the AM. So that's why I was curious. Thank you. Through the chair, are you ready to move on to the next uh, agenda item? Uh, Mr. Rivera just put himself in the queue, so uh, let's have one more question at least before we go forward. Mr. Rivera. Um, Mr. Thank Chair, you, Mr. you Chair, may have been missing me, Allard but I did put in queue twice. In and I, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I apologize. Each other. I didn't see that. Go ahead, Ms. Allard, and then Mr. Rivera. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate it. Um, I, I just kind of, and I was, I was back a little ways and it, and then everything progressed and I was, um, wasn't able to speak then, but I, I wanted to just say thank you, um, to the administration for bringing this information about the boards and commission up to the assembly, um, because you're having to grapple with things that were missed in the prior administrations. And, um, this is very enlightening information. And I just wanted to say thank you. We have a lot to deal with. And I, I know that, um, my fellow assembly members probably really appreciate you bringing this all to our attention. So thank you very much. And through the chair, this is Sammy Graham again. Um, I was uh, going to address Ms. Ennis's comment. Um, it is in code that they are supposed to be staggered. It just happens that three, these three vacancies were the three that were up because their terms expired this year. So they would have the same expert uh, expiration date or these were vacancies actually may i go oh, mr chair now, now, yeah now mr rivera okay thank you mr chair um so uh yeah i also pulled up that that piece in code uh which the chief of staff did it's for folks who want to uh, look at it it's for dot o five dot o four o and it details the the requirement to stagger also details the requirement to um, have uh, folks serving for three years unless otherwise specified in code um th the question i had was um you know if you look at on board which i assume is correct at this point um after the administration has gone through and cleaned everything up which i appreciate um 
you know, if you look at the terms, these are certainly not staggered terms. Um, of the nine seats, uh, eight of them will be back up before us next year. And one will be back before us in 2023. So I'm wondering, um, you know, did the administration take that into account? And, and how will the administration be rectifying that? This is Terrence uh, Shanigan through the chair. Um, the what we found is that their uh, on board is not is not accurate. And uh, we have continued to find that there's been flaws in the in the information that was uploaded and maybe sometimes it just wasn't updated. There may have even been changes in staggered dates that are being shown in on board. So it's a it's a long process to go through each one of the boards to figure out what the what the actual uh, historical seat had as an expiration date. We're continuing to work through that. And uh, as we get to them, uh, we're trying to update and confirm that the actual dates that you're seeing. But right now, um, we're following code and trying to keep what we have in front of you on, in paper as our record and what we're seeing in onboard because that was there was nothing guiding uh, um, that from a requirement. There were people putting information or not putting information in, and it's happened historically, looks like, uh, as far as we can see, going back to 2018. Uh, and so that information right now, I can't say I would rely solely on what you're seeing online on onboard. But as we get that updated, we'll definitely let uh, the assembly members know uh, when we have confirmed um, all the, the relevant information inside there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right. So uh, Barbara Jones, the clerk, put in there her note again, reiterating that please, if you're going to put a note in the chat, if you're making a comment of substance, speak it into the record when you have the opportunity or we will read it because the chat does not, uh, is not included in the, in the recorded part of the meeting. Then Mr. Perez Verdia, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just another question for the administration. I, I, I forgot. Um, in terms of your process of selecting these, uh, we already heard about that the mayor did not um, take into consideration um, political con contributions or 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 s support. M my question is about um, relationships, family relationships. I'm I'm wondering both from a legal perspective, and maybe someone can speak to that whether there is any restrictions for these commissions on that, and also from a selection criteria, um, members that were selected for these boards and in commissions that are directly related to members of the administration. Maybe you could speak to that in terms of what whether whether that was a, fa a factor or if or if you considered that. Um, and then I would like to, to hear someone from legal just to make sure that there's nothing um, that is um, that, that 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 those kinds of appointments violate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And I, I will jump in quickly on the question of family members. It's a topic that's been ongoing, and there has been a practice in years past of having family members serve on various commissions, probably the last five mayors that I'm aware of. Anyhow, so I will allow legal to respond to that and also the administration, the rest of that question as well. Uh, so Amy Dabowski, uh, to the chair and to the assembly, um, it has been a standing practice of multiple mayors, as uh, Chair Constant pointed out, that multiple mayors, spouses, including the previous acting mayor, Mayor Berkowitz's wife, they have served on multiple on, on different commissions over the years. It is a, st I mean, it's just it's nothing new. This has happened before by multiple mayors. I'm not aware of anything in code that prohibits uh, uh, either a chair of the assembly or a mayor or a you know a member of the assembly, their spouse from serving on a board a commission. I'm just not aware of any of those statutes. I've never seen that. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now next in the queue then is uh, Mrs. Allard again. Thank you. I apologize. Um, so, uh, yeah, I was kind of going down the same road as Mr. Perez-Verdia, and, and the reason why was because I was wondering, um, 
I figured that would be brought up, but as a sitting assembly persons, we actually have members who are sitting on boards and commissions um, that have donated to our campaigns. So I would wonder if there was a conflict and apparently there's not. And I would also um, raise the question of, you know, we are a small state, but we also donate to governor races and all other sorts of races. And I know I donated to uh, Governor Dunleavy and I was put on a human rights commission so I, 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 I can't see there being a conflict. Otherwise, everybody who donates, there would be no community service being able to be filled. So I guess, Ms. Ennis, if, if it's legal and it's not, then that's fine. But I, I, would, have a, I would be challenged to think what members of the community, just because they donated, uh, couldn't serve. Go ahead, Ms. Ennis, thank you. Okay, thank you. I'd say there's definitely been a, pro a practice that family members have served on these boards. Um, and certainly on the advisory boards, there is just no issue at all. Um, we did have a member of the Sullivan family on one of the utility boards, but that was also uh, uh, was fine. And I had a little bit of more concern and consternation on the youth board when a member of the mayor's staff is on that board. However, it is if it's an advisory board, but I think we're fine. But, Ethics Board has made a distinction between executives uh, of all types being on adjudicatory boards because then they're doing what we call serving two masters. They, they're an executive uh, and their master is the mayor versus they're in an adjudicatory setting. So that's the one distinction we have made. Um, and I don't see that yet in the boards I've just seen. And as to campaign dollars, that's a case by case, but generally I think that is acceptable. Thank you, Ms. Ennis. And I just would add my question was a little bit more nuanced than what was presented just now. My question wasn't, can a donor serve? My question was, was that a restrictive criteria? A, a criteria used across the board to say if you didn't donate, you didn't get the job, or if you did support my opponent, you didn't get the job. It was a question about screening criteria, not about their fitness to serve. And so, uh, thank you. And not that it would be appropriate or not, it just is a question that has uh, uh, interest to members of the public for purposes of understanding why and how we got where we are. Thank you. And the answer was no, so it's simple. Um, we can proceed down the road of the next committee commission. Thank you. The next commission uh, that we have before the assembly is the Watershed Nat and Natural Resources Advisory Commission. Uh, on your agenda, it's item 10 Delta 7. Mr. Shanigan. Mr. Shanigan to the chair. Uh, 10 Delta 7 is the Watershed and Natural Resources Advisory Commission, and that in code is in 4.90. It's a nine member uh, advisory commission. Currently, we have four filled seats that are active, and we have the remainder, the other five. Uh, seat three expired in 2021, seat five expired in 2020, seat seven expired in 2021. Seat eight expired in 2020 and seat nine expired in 2020. The administration uh, has appointed for seat five, Luke Graham, and that seat uh, currently would have a, uh, as you look in, if you're able to see this uh, and on board, you'll see that it had an expiration, seat five of 2020 and this would allow this seat to be filled through 2023 in its normal cycle mr mr chair if we don't see it if we don't hear you stop us is it okay if we just keep going because we have a lot yep. to get through Go on. Thank you, sir. Go on. All right, thank you, sir. All right, the next item we have is 10 Delta 8. 10 Delta 8 is the Youth Advisory Commission appointments. Mr. Shanigan. To the chair, the Youth Advisory Commission is a 15 member youth commission, and uh, most of these seats uh, serve sort of abbreviated terms, but a lot of them, all but one, seat 11, expired between 2019 and 2021. 
and there were 12 identified appointments for seats 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 12. Those seats have varied staggered terms depending on those uh, appointments. Seat, one's 20, seat 1 and 2 are 2024. 20, seat 3 is 23. Seat 4 is 2024. 20, seat 5 is 2023. 20, seat 6 is 2024. 20, seat 7 is 2023. 20, seat 8 is 2022. 20, seat 9 is 2024. 20, seat 10 is 2022. 20, and seat 12 is 2023. 20, Thank you, Mr. Chair. On this particular one, I'm going to be asking for a motion to bifurcate and not move Bryce Wilbanks forward. That is one that um, we, uh, the applicant would like to withdraw from that particular nomination. Okay, no, thank you. Thank you. I, I, before you proceed, though, I think that Ms. LaFrance has finally resolved the IT concerns. Are you there, Suzanne? Hi, Chris. I am. Can folks hear me okay? Yes, you have the con. Thank you, Mr. Constant. Um, and I don't see anyone in the queue, so I believe um, Ms. Domboski had asked if they could just continue to proceed, which is fine. Thanks. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I jumped in the queue right before. Oh, Mr. Dunbar? Yeah, and this is... Um, Ms. Dombasi, you've spoken a little bit about um, geographic diversity and something I noticed about this and just perhaps you didn't get any applicants, um, but I don't see anyone here uh, that is, I don't believe I see anyone here affiliated with um, East Ank with East High School or with Bartlett High School. I could be mistaken, um, but I, you know, it, I assume it's because you didn't get any applicants from there, but if in the future it's possible to get someone from one of those high schools, I, I would really appreciate it. Absolutely, Mr. Dumber, through the chair. I think that is a great recommendation. Um, we're still actively trying to fill this commission is what I'm being told. So if you have anybody you know who might be interested, if you can encourage them to apply, we would be happy to make sure that the that East is represented or the folks from Betty Davis High School are represented there. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Dunbar. All right, the next one is 10 Delta 9. This is the Anchorage Eagles Commission. And Ms. Dimboski, actually Ms. Allard is in the queue. I apologize, Ms. Domboski. I know you're probably pulling your hair out with us asking all these questions. Um, I wanted to say that East, I believe Bartlett also, um, actually it falls in District 2, which is Eagle River Chugiak. So I agree with Mr. Dunbar. If we could look at something like that, that would be great. Um, but it does fall in Assembly District 2. Go Bears. All right, 10 Delta 9, we are back to the Anchorage Equal Rights Commission appointments. Mr. Shanigan. To the chair, uh, this is a nine member regulatory adjudicatory, uh, adjudicatory commission. It currently has four seats that have expired and five that are filled actively. Let's see. And we have three uh, individuals that have been identified and appointed uh, for seat two, Jeff Martin, seat five, Erica Johnson, and seat seven, Cheston McRae. All right, the next item is 10 Delta 10. We have the Board, and building board of Building Regulations Examiners and Appeals. Mr. Shanigan's just flipping to the right page here, and he'll be ready in just one second. Big book. The chair. This is an 11 to 15 member board. And uh, currently we have 10 vacancies. Um, the board requires a minimum of 11 members. So that's why it's got a range of between 11 and 15. Um, and we have 
two current uh, nominations for this board. Actually, there are four. For seat three is Craig Farin. Seat six, which is currently vacant, is Larry Thunder. Seat 11, which is currently vacant. We have a for you. Okay. So Dan Benoit. Dan Benoit. Yeah. And that's it. Just we have two nominees no. being put forward for that one. Craig Frieden and Dan Benoit. So seat three and seat 12. We have a question. Um, a couple of folks in the queue here. First, Mr. Weddleton and then Mr. Constant. Thanks. So looking at this one and then the um, document that was posted on the website for the meeting that lists the different boards and who's nominated and being replaced and so on. And on the last page under vacancies filled, it says for this, um, for the um, building board, that there's a vacancy to be filled by Richard Veredet. V E R R E Y D T. So he's not on this the in the A M, but it's on this list somehow. And then it's Larry Cunder. Well, Through the chair, <clears throat> this is um, Sammy Graham. <clears throat> we are going to uh, check on that, but I think you are correct, um, Assemblyman Welton. <clears throat> I believe that Larry Cunder is going to replace seat six as the electrical contractor, and Richard Verite, I'm not sure I'm saying his name correctly, will is the civil engineer and will replace seats 11 <clears throat> just as the assembly memorandum states oh is it on there i'm sorry it's not on the agenda, it's not on the agenda. um the memorandum yeah I, I don't see them on the online version at any rate Mr. Um, Weddleton, it might be because they're coming. <laughs> but, oh, it hasn't happened yet. Oh, I got it. But the ones that are on uh, 10 Delta 10, the ones that have been submitted, AM 705-2021, we have Craig Frieden, mechanical engineer, and then we have Dan Vinoy, an electrical contractor. So those are the ones that are on the agenda. Okay, that's fine. I just want to make sure they weren't missed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Weddleton. Mr. Constant. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I was a little bit confused because uh, what I just heard stated wasn't the name of Vinoy for an electrical contractor. It was another name. And so uh, as long as Vinoy is listed as an electrical contractor, because that's what he is, that's fine. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Constant. Through the chair, you're correct. Uh, I think what was happening here in the room is I was reading off of the agenda, what's in front of you, and the documents that have been put in front of you. And then we have um, names that we we're planning on putting forward on the addendum to the agenda. And so we were looking at both documents. So you got a preview of what's coming. Anything else, Mr. Constant? That was it, thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Ms. Domboski. Um, Thank you so much, Madam Chair. All right, the next one, uh, item 10 Delta 11 is the Election Commission. Through the Chair, uh, the Election Commission is a five member uh, judicatory uh, commission, and it currently has three seats that uh, have expired all in 2021. Uh, this particular. Two, two nominees. Yes, we have uh, two nominees, uh, which are Heather Clofton for seat three and Ward Hanger for seat four. All right, thank you. Item 10 Delta 12, the Homeless Housing and Neighborhood Development Commission, they also refer to as a hand commission. 
So, sorry, I. Ms. Dimboski, I've got Mr. Dunbar in the queue. Thank you, Madam Chair. I apologize. It took a little bit uh, longer. Um, so again, this is one of those situations. We we have Heather. Uh, let's see here. We have Heather Clopton and Ward Singer uh, for the Elections Commission here. But our, our documents also show Joyce Anderson being replaced by Cecilia Donaldson. Um, is that in a different item, not on this AM? And actually, Mr. Dunbar, if I can just jump in, we have a note in the chat from uh, Claire Ross, and the ones submitted in October are in the 11s on the agenda. Got and it. so we're, we're looking at the 10s right now, the ones that, that are being sense. submitted in November, if that helps. So I'll just say that um, we have received a few messages from the public about Miss Anderson and concerns with uh, replacing her that she had, you know, this is a pretty, um, the election board is one of our more strenuous and technical and their concerns about losing her institutional knowledge and so I, I was wondering if the administration could speak to that at all. Thank you for the question, Mr. Dunbar. As I, I as I indicated when I spoke to um, Assemblymember Perez Verdia when he asked the question, the appointments of nominees for boards and commissions, and, and frankly, directors of departments, is the sole discretion of the mayor, and the mayor takes into account what he believes are different skill sets. Uh, sometimes fresh perspectives, and in this case, the mayor has chosen not to put that person forward for re for reappointment. Okay. Are there any are there any vacant positions on the election board, or is it the election commission rather? I believe they're currently they're expired terms. They're not vacancies, Mr. Dunbar. Got it. Thank you for the okay. question. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dunbar. Ms. Allard is in the queue. Ms. Allard. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And normally I don't go here, but I'm just going to go here. I really appreciate the fact that we actually have diversity on this uh, board now. Um, a, a male <laughs> being appointed is um, a, a, is a new perspective. And I really appreciate that we are able to bring folks that have different perspectives on board. So uh, kudos. I don't know how long it's been, but it's nice to see um, a male on one of the boards here for the elections. So thank you. Um, and Madam Chair, um, Taryn Shanigan has a follow up that, he, uh, that he'd like to share with the assembly. Uh, yes, please go ahead, Mr. Shanigan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, had, I actually spoke with uh, Joyce Anderson this morning. Um, and we've been in communication over the last two days. Uh, she was notified previously in the process that her term was coming to an end, but she didn't uh, submit the necessary paperwork um, that we require even for reappointments to come through that process. And uh, when I talked with her, uh, we just discussed that she had further interest in uh, applying or being reconsidered for a potential future uh, vacancy that um, she could go through the process, go through on board and resubmit those. Thank you. Mr. Perez Verdia is in the queue. Mr. Perez Verdia. Thank you. Just a, a quick follow up. So I understand what you just shared with us. The um, can, can you just make sure we understand that she intentionally did not submit to be reapplied to that board and you asked her about future board service but you didn't indicate what her response to that was so just to, to those two things did, are you saying that that she did not seek reappointment that's the first question and the second question is when she was asked whether she would want to have future service what was her response thank you thank you for that um our conversation was about whether or not she had followed the process to go through and be considered for reappointment, which she had not. Um, she didn't indicate to me in that conversation that she did not want to serve. She just uh, advocated for the skill sets that she brought to the table and her interests were, were in elections. And I indicated to her if she had future interest in uh, serving on this board uh, or any other 
to make sure that she uh, submitted the information that's required in order for her for her to be considered for that. Thank you. That, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Perez for Dia. Mr. Constant. Thank you. Was this one of the items that was uh, not labeled properly? Was she notified that her term was expiring? She, uh, Assembly Member Constant. Yes, she told me that she was uh, she was notified by uh, Stephanie Williams that her that her term was coming to an end. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Constant. I don't see anyone else in the queue. If um, if you want to go ahead and proceed, Ms. Thank you, Madam, Thank you, Madam Chair. We are now on item 10, Delta 12, and that is for the hand uh, commission. So the Ho Homeless Housing and Neighborhood Development Commission. Mr. Shanigan. <clears throat> Thank you uh, to the chair. This is a nine member housing homeless and neighborhood development commission. And currently we have identified four, uh, four seats that three of which have expired and one is vacant. Seat nine is vacant. Seat three, four, and five uh, have expired. I'd like to note that seat five expired October 14th of 2020. Um, and at this time, we have uh, submitted two names for seat three and seat four, Julie Colomb for seat three and Kathy Hensley for seat four. All right, the next one we have is item 10 Delta 13. Uh, I have Mr. Constant in the queue. Go ahead, Mr. Constant. Thank you. Um, one of those two appointees has uh, filed paperwork to run for office and um, it's a pretty gray area. It's probably allowed to be appointed, but it certainly raises questions of propriety. Of what, Mr. Constant? Just of propriety. Uh, if the intent of this individual is to be campaigning over the next several months, a seat on the hand commission might be uh, because of their position in making uh, recommendations for HUD funding and their position and all of those roles. It, it just it's it certainly is a gray area to me. Thank you for the I, I'm going to take that as a question, Mr. Constant. Um, over the years, there's been multiple members of, for example, the Budget Advisory Commission that were actively serving. I know when I was serving on the Budget Advisory Commission, as well as the Parks and Rec Board of Supervisors in Eagle River, um, as well as being a community council president, I was not per, per, precluded from participating. I don't believe being a candidate is a disqualifying factor. Now, if she becomes elected and she's an assembly member, she'll probably have to resign from that commission, but um, that would be a question for a law. This is uh, Tien as deputy municipal attorney. Um, yeah, I'd have to look at it at that point. I don't think there's a, a direct conflict at this point until she further down the line. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Constant. I want to note just for the record, Ms. Allard has put in the chat, I was appointed and was a candidate for a, for a board via the state. I don't see any other um, members in the queue. If you want to go ahead and proceed, Ms. Domboski. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I know we have a number of commissions that are left and we have, I think, one hour left. So I'm going to just keep going and please feel free to jump in and stop me if I go too fast. Um, item 10 Delta 13 is the Public Transit Advisory Board. Uh, Mr. Shannigan. Chair, this is a uh, advisory board and it has three current expired terms, seat two, seat four, and seat five, all expired in 2021. And we have one name putting forward, C.B. Brady for seat four, currently filled by Genevieve Mina. The next item we have is 10 Delta 14. It's the Sister Cities Commission. Mr. Shanian. Thank you through the chair. This is a nine to 14 member and it currently has five vacant seats. Seat one, two, and 
Three, one, three. I'm not sure you got this information, but Mr. Perez, you're, you're, thank you. If you could mute, please, folks. Sorry, I didn't want to get this private conversation on the record. Sorry for interrupting. Sorry, Mr. Sorry, Shanahan. I'll continue. Uh, seat one, two, and three are vacant. Seat seven is vacant, and seat nine is vacant. And there are three names being put forward. For seat one, Hiroko Harada. Seat two, or correction, seat seven is Tatiana Robbins. And seat nine, Whitney Weiger. And I do have two assembly members in the queue with questions. First, Mr. Weddleton, and then Mr. Dunbar. Thanks, and I was uh, slow on the draw there. So back on 10D13 of the Public Transit Advisory Board. So I, I think, um, Terrence, you said that there were more than one empty seats. Is that correct? Correct. We have three uh, expired seats in that. So you have three expired seats. So that was Miss um, Mina wanting to continue? Just on what I have in front of me here. Just for the record, her name is Manu Mane. Thank you. Mr. Weddleton, would it be okay if we got back to you with that answer? Yeah, and I just, I mean, broadly, if there's a couple other seats that are vacant, it seems like if she wanted to be on, leave her on and fill those vacant seats and, um, you know, get the board filled. Um, but no, I mean, Mr. Brady, I think, has become very active, and that's a good thing. So, not going to comment on him. So, thanks. Yeah, and just just to reiterate, if people are interested in reappointing, they have to, you know, resubmit their name through onboard and go through the process. And I don't know with this particular board if we have other names that are pending, uh, maybe at the next meeting for the agenda. I'm not sure, but I will double check for you, and we'll get back to you um, after this meeting today, sir. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Weddleton. There are three other members in the queue. Next, Mr. Dunbar, and then Mr. Rivera, and then Mr. Constant. Thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, I, I certainly concur with what uh, Mr. Weddleton said that, you know, better to fill vacancies than um, replace folks if they're willing to keep going. But um, my question was on um, boards and, I'm sorry, the uh, Sister Cities Commission, which I think is where we're at now. Yes, sir. Um, and so I, I had actually, well, first of all, I'm very glad to see you um, uh, reappointed Harada Sensei that um, Chris and I both know and, and love. Um, and there are a number of other people here that were involved um, in our work uh, with Chitose uh, and, and with Japan. But my question is actually, we, it seemed like there might have been some confusion. I, I know at least one more member of these board, this board, I think two, reached out to me and they seem to be some kind of breakdown in communication between them and uh, Stephanie Williams, the, the the person who was in this position prior, uh, when it came to sort of appointments and reappointments of expiring terms. And it, it, I'm not sure what exactly drove that, but I, but I noticed here that there are three terms that are like about to expire in the next, you know, 21 days um, or, or ne a little bit more than that. But um, and so I guess I, I would just want to know, Mr. Shanigan, have any of those people applied for reappointment? Do they know they have to apply for reappointment? And will there be any issues uh, there? Thank you, Mr. Dunbar, for the question. Uh, I'm working on that. Um, I, we're, we're currently, I think Ms. Domboski had already uh, stated at the very beginning that we're working on notifications that are going out uh, to those that have served and uh, maybe are no longer interested or have moved on. And then uh, also notifications of those that have terms that are coming uh, coming up. And I see the dates here uh, are November 30th. So that's something that's creeping up on us fast and we'll get back to you on that. Okay, great. Because I know at least one of them had indicated to me that they wanted to continue serving, but it seemed like that they had, again, had some breakdown in communication with Ms. Williams where I'm not sure what it was, but they were under the impression that they couldn't reapply or that somehow they were going to be replaced, even if they did reapply. And and again, I, I, I think it was just a communications issue. So um, I really appreciate you reaching out to those folks and just letting them know that they have to go through that onboard process and then that, that, that they'll be considered. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Dunbar, Mr. Rivera, and then Mr. Constant. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a couple of points. Uh, first, just wanted to clarify for the record, uh, Mr. Weddleton, I believe, when speaking of the PTAD, the Public Transit Advisory appointment, um, was speaking about Genevieve Mina, not Minu Mene. Um, and then also wanted to um, uh, just state, uh, I did reach out to uh, Miss Mina and uh, she actually is very much interested in serving again on the Public Transit Advisory Board and did submit an application to be reappointed. Um, so as I understand it, there are two vacancies. So, um, uh, and uh, the municipal manager has stated multiple times on the record, so no need to do it again, that it is up to the, the mayor and the executive. But um, definitely, I think Ms. Ms. Mina uh, has done admirably on the board, and I think she would be valuable to reappoint uh, if that is the will of the administration. Thanks. Uh, through the chair, Mr. Rivera, we really appreciate that recommendation and we'll make note of it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rivera. Next, Mr. Constant and then Ms. Allard. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> For the Sister Cities Commission, I just want to make sure we put it out there and, and acknowledge the fact that much of the confusion that came up in this process where holes in the record keeping and um, the, you know perceptions of fear and not knowing what to do and all of the challenges that have kind of hounded this initial wave of appointments came from this conversation and this commission and uh, I would like to the administration really to think through that uh, some of the individuals who were serving on this commission were serving because of their direct relationship with individuals from the sister cities and how they just didn't know how, if they were supposed to apply for some of them because the way that the data may or may not have been accurate on the website, it appeared like they were being pushed off in a manner that, as we all recognize, the code doesn't provide. And so I'm hopeful that for this commission in particular, the administration can spend some more time thinking through who was kept and who wasn't and how and who might be a good fit in relationship to their connections to our sister city com communities out there, not just based on kind of the confusion that occurred in the process. And again, that's because I would suggest that this commission and the confusion around it is what raised up all of the concerns that seem to have driven our scrutiny of this process. Thank you. Thank you through the chair, Mr. Constant. We appreciate those comments. Thank you, Mr. Constant, and thank you, Ms. Domboski. Ms. Allard has uh, pulled herself out of the queue, so you may go ahead and continue. Thank you, Madam Chair. The next board and commission we're going to be discussing is item 10 Delta 15. That's the Board of Ethics appointment. Mr. Shanigan. Through the chair, this is a five member board. Uh, currently has one expired seat, seat three expired this year. The name being moved forward is Joan Wilson. Madam Chair, the next item up we have in front of us is 10 Delta 16. This is the Historic Preservation Commission. Mr. Shannon. Mr. Chair, this is a nine member commission and currently has one vacancy on seat one and one expiring seat on seat seven. And we have one name being moved forward for seat seven. That's Lauren Lehman. Madam Chair, the next boarding commission we have in front of us is at agenda item 10 Delta 17. This is the Houseless Lived Experience Advisory Board Appointments. Mr. Shanigan. One moment, please. To the chair, uh, this is the Houseless Lives Advisory Board is uh, a nine it's an it's a new board it's 
information hasn't fully populated in on board at this time. It's nine seats and we've put forward uh, five names for this board. Uh, for seat one, Rochelle Griffiths, seat three, Robin Platt, seat five, Jason Robinson, seat seven, Terrence Shanigan, and seat nine, Sarah Short. All right, Madam Chair, the next uh, board that we'll be discussing. And I have, uh, excuse me, Ms. Domboski, I've got Mr. Dunbar in the queue. Thank you, Madam Chair. And, um, you know, this, um, Mr. Shanigan, I, I appreciate your willingness, of course, to step up and serve on this board. And um, but I, I think it does raise some concern for me, similar to the um, the board, uh, Mr. Wilbanks, uh, you know, asking us to bifurcate and pull off the Youth Advisory Commission. I, I don't recall. Actually, maybe maybe Mr. Rivera can speak to this. We we have we sometimes have administration people serve on boards when it's specified in code that you know you know the uh the municipal manager fills this ro role or the cfo spills this uh fills this role um but i i don't recall unless it's specified by code i don't recall other situations where a member employs the administration um you know serve onto a onto a board or commission and i apologize if it is specified in this code and, and i just didn't realize it Thank you for the question, Mr. Dunbar. Um, the code the code doesn't prohibit, um, as Ms. Ennis previously said, serving on advisory boards. This is not an adjudicatory board. This is an advisory board. There's been multiple instances where members of the mayor's staff at previous administrations have served on boards or commissions or advi in advisory roles. Um, one of them I can think of as I look to my right and see Mr. Baker. He served on the 49th State Board before. He served on multiple boards and commissions uh, as a member, of, as an executive. So again, as Ms. Ennis has previously stated, this is an advisory board. And Mr. Shanigan has, in fact, um, experienced homelessness. He is a qualified member who has seen this issue from multiple perspectives, including a law enforcement perspective. And so uh, the mayor felt his perspective as being somebody who has experienced this from multiple facets would be a valuable um, person to serve to add to the conversation and the diversity on this particular board. That uh, well, th thank you for that. And and I, I agree that Mr. Shanigan has a, a unique and important perspective, uh, but it does still raise some concerns to me that someone would be you know, for any board, even an advisory board. Um, in the same way that I don't think assembly members typically serve on these boards uh, and commissions unless they are, um, you know, in one of those designated spots, like an ex officio member of the, a of the ACDA board, for example, or um, I'm an executive, you know, ex officio member of uh, Chamber of Commerce. So that, that's a little bit different thing. But um, yeah, I, I just I'd say it, it it raises some some concerns for me, and perhaps it was the 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 practice in some prior administrations, but I I don't recall I don't recall us doing it in the last five six years. Um, I'll have to go back and look at that. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Dunbar. I have two others in the queue, Mr. Rivera and Ms. Ennis. Actually, Ms. Ennis, did you want to speak on this issue? Yes, Chair. Well, and I will be speaking on this issue specifically as well, Madam Chair. OK, so um, I'm not sure who wants to go first, if Mr. Rivera and then maybe I, I would Ms. like Ennis. to go first, Madam Chair. OK, Thanks. go ahead. Thank you. So, um, yeah, I, I expected this issue to come up and so I'm fully prepared to address it. Um, as folks know, I served in the Berkowitz administration for the first year and a bit of um, his term before I began running for the assembly and was elected in 2017. Um, so w when I worked in the Berkowitz uh, administration, specifically in the mayor's office, um, I actually uh, worked a little bit on boards and commissions. I was one of two staff. The lead was the uh, deputy chief of staff, and I was the assistant for boards and commissions. Um, I was very interested in serving on the public transit advisory board and brought it up to my boss and my boss's boss and my boss's boss's boss 
um, mm-hmm. to see if they were okay with it. And after extensive deliberation, they did decide it, it was fine for me to serve in this advisory board. Um, so while I was serving in the mayor's mm-hmm. office, also helping out with boards and commissions, I was appointed to the public transit advisory board. Um, so there is a little bit of history of, of this happening. Um, obviously, you know, uh, there were internal discussions when I did it, and I imagine there were internal d- discussions within the Bronson administration as well, but um, there were no issues raised when I was appointed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rivera. Ms. Ennis? I was just going to note that if anybody had some very, you know, case-specific concerns about that to bring it to the ethics board, uh, but I agree with Mr. Uh, Rivera that this, we do have a past precedence of this. Thank you, Ms. Ennis. Go ahead, Ms. Dombowski. Thank you, Madam Chair. The next board um, is item 10 Delta 18 on your agenda. It's the Anchorage Regional Landfill Closure and Post-Closure Investment Fund Board. Mr. Um, Shanigan. The Anchorage Regional Landfill Closure and Post-Closure Investment Fund Board is a reappointment for Jeffrey Sins. All right, Madam Chair, seeing no questions, um, we are now to the 11th. If we could scroll up to item 11A. Oh, that's quick. <laughs> All right, the first item on the agenda under unfinished business, 11A, Municipal Airports Aviation Advisory Commission. Um, Mr. Shanigan. Thank you. The MAAAC is a seven member advisory commission. Currently we have seats one through five that um, are in some state of vacancy or at expiration. Seats one and two expired October 14, 2021. Seats three, four, and five are vacant. There are four names forward from the administration. Seat one, Keenan Zirkle. Seat two, Dave Frazier. Seat four is Michael McCauley. And seat five is Michael Williams. And um, I've got Mr. Weddleton in the queue with a question. Uh, thanks. Um, so I, I'm sorry, how, how many seats are vacant right now? Five. Four expired. Five. Four expired. And we have four here. Because uh, we just got an email from someone who said he's on there, wants to continue serving. He says his term's not over till uh, Michael, I'm sorry, Chet, Chet Harris. And he's been on there he's since 2017. He reapplied. Um, and he shows his term is through 2022. And I guess he's got a screenshot saying that he expects to be reappointed. I don't, I don't Anyway, I'm just relating an email we just got. Mr. Wellington, can you repeat that name for us? Uh, Chet Harris. OK. We'll look into that. He'd be happy to serve and believes he still has another year. Thank you. We'll look into that. Thank you, Mr. Reddleton. Thank you, Ms. Domboski. I think you can go ahead and proceed. I don't see anyone else in the queue. Thank you, Madam Chair. Item 11B on your agenda is the Investment Advisory Commission appointments. Mr. Shannon. I would like to make a comment. My name is Jamie Patterson Sims. Hello, ma'am. Are you with the administration? No, I'm not. I'm a commissioner on um, the Municipal Airports Advisory Commission. And um, I'm, a, I'm a member also with Chet Harris. And I'd like to make a comment, please. Um, this is not our the time for public comment. And I just wanted to clarify um, if the administration had asked you Ms. Domboski, did you? Um, no. no. OK, so ma'am, this is a work session. We don't have um, public comment scheduled for these, but um, if you could let me, I'll get your information offline and um, we'll discuss, OK? OK, go ahead, Ms. Domboski. 
Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so we are on item 11B. This is the Investment Advisory Commission appointments. Through the chair, this is a nine member investment advisory commission. There are three seats that have expired in 2021 seat three, seat six, and seat seven. Three names have been put forward for seat three Ed Hendrickson, seat six Chad Hufford, and seat seven Brandon Ritter. All right, Madam Chair, the next item is item 11C. 11C is the Human Resources Advisory Board. To the chair, this is a five member advisory board. Um, we currently have one vacant seat, seat five, seats one, two, three, and four expired. Seat one and four expired in 2021. Seat two and three expired in 2020. And we're putting one name forward for seat five, Bernadette Bradley. Thank you, Madam Chair. The next board is item 11D on your agenda. This is the Salaries and Emoluments Commission. As a chair, this is a five member commission. Seats one through four are active. Seat five is vacant. One name is being put forward for seat five, Paul Perkins. Thank you. Madam Chair, the next item is 11E. This is for the 49th State Angel Fund. the chair this is a nine member advisory committee and there are currently five seats uh, that are either in vacant or expired seat one expired 2021 seat two is vacant seat five is vacant seat six expired in 2021 and seat eight expired in 2021 administration has put five names forward for seat one, Steve Zellner. Seat two, seat two is Lee Cruz. Seat five is Shane Canada. Seat six is Matt Thorpe. Seat eight, Jason Moorfield. Thank you, Madam Chair. The next item is 11F on your agenda. This is for the Anchorage Port Commission. the chair this is a nine member port commission uh, it has regulatory and adjudicatory uh, commission currently seats three and four expired seat three expired in 2021 seat four expired in 2016 seat five is currently vacant seat six and seven expired in 2021 seat eight expired in 2020 and seat nine expired in 2019. There are seven names being put forward by the administration for seat three, Chris uh, Menklich, uh, seat four, Mike Robbins, seat five, Peggy Rotan, seat six, Scott Seltzer, seat seven, Avis Thompson, seat eight, Ronald Ward the second, and seat nine, Garrett Ward Wong. Thank you, Madam Chair. The next item is 11G. This is for the Anchorage Women's Commission. I need to talk slower because I think I'm going too fast for Mr. Champion. Sorry about that. Uh, this is a nine member women's commission. Currently there are three seats that have expired. Seat one expired in 2020, seat two in 2021, and seat four expired in 2021. There are three names being put forward for seat one, Heather Clopton, seat two, Alexis Johnson, 
and C4, Renee Scott. All right, Madam Chair, thank you. Uh, the next item is 11H on your agenda. This is for the Bidding Review Board. Mr. Chair, this is a five member board. There are two expired seats, seat two and seat four, both expired in 2021. The administration is putting two names forward for seat two, Don Winchester, and for seat four, Christine Stoner. And if I may, um, through the chair, uh, usually when you reappoint someone, you have attendance records. Um, we do not have uh, Mr. Winchester's re attendance records. We've reached out to the chair and there has been no response. Um, and the staff representative no longer works for the municipality. We will keep working on that, but generally they go with your packet and that's why they're missing. All right, I don't see any questions, so I'm gonna keep going. We're on item 11I on your agenda. This is for the Board of Building Regulation Examiners and Appeals. Chair, this board has between 11 and 15 members. There are currently, let's see, 10 vacant seats. Seat three expired in 20, seat three and five expired in 2021. Seat six expired in 23, or correction, seat six and seven, nine, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 are all vacant. Administration has, or is that correct? We have four seats on that. Okay. Putting four names forward. Is that four or is that three or two? Oh, yeah, because we already did the other two before. These were the two that Mr. Weddleton commented. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. So the two that are going forward to this one is Larry. Yeah. Seat six and seat 11. Mm -hmm. uh, Larry Cunder and seat 11 is Richard Verrett. All right, the next one is item 11J on your agenda. This is for the Budget Advisory Commission. This is an 11-member advisory commission. has one vacant seat, seat 11. Administration is putting forward one name, Randy Salty, for seat 11. All right, the next item is item 11K. 11K is the Geotechnical Advisory Commission. This is a nine mem uh, member advisory commission. Seat one expired in 2021 and seats eight and nine expired in 2018. The administration is putting three names forward for seat one, Cody Kreitel, seat eight, John Thornley, and seat nine, Amy Steiner. All right, thank you, Madam Chair. We're gonna go to item 11L. This is for the Heritage Land Bank Advisory Commission. Through the chair, this is a seven member advisory commission. Seats one, two, and three expired in 2021. Seat four is vacant. Uh, seat six and seven are also vacant. The administration is putting forward six names for seat one, Brian Flynn. Seat two, Tammy Oswald. Seat three, Scott Myers. Seat four, Ryan Hansen. Seat six, Carmela Warfield. And seat seven, Brett Wilbanks. And Mr. Dunbar is in the queue. Mr. Dunbar. Thank you, Madam Chair. So this is one of the ones where there are code requirements. Um, so looking at 460.200 um, is the code site. And in A, it says, there's a, a variety of things. And you have the one person from Girdwood, one person from Eagle River. Um, and then it says in A, it says no more than three members shall have professional interests in acquisition, financing, or development of private real property within the municipality. And looking through these, um, uh, looking through these resumes, it, it appears that I think four or five of them are realtors. And so I guess my question is, which are the three and then aren't there more than three that you're appointing um, and how does that not conflict with that code? Well, 
we're just pulling up the documents here. It just give us just a second if you would. Dunbar, this is a question we're going to go ahead and get back to you on because they're, they're looking through the, their documents right now. We're just trying to pull them up and uh, we will get back to you on that one, Mr. Dunbar. That's a great question. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Constant is in the queue. Yeah, I can uh, delay the question. Same question. It's like all my realtor peers are there and <laughs> the code has some limits. I don't know, Mr. Mr. Constant. I think you have more friends than that. I don't know if all your peers are there. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. There's a, a series of them, and they're all good people. I, I don't have any problem, but we want to follow the rules. Absolutely. That is our intent as well. And if uh, we'll evaluate it, and we will absolutely get back with you. All right, Madam Chair, 11M is the next one that is up. 11M is the On-Site Water and Wastewater Technical Review Board. Mr. Chair, this is a seven member technical review board. Um, it has currently two vacancies, seat one and seat seven. Uh, seat three is expired uh, this year, 2021. Two names have been put forward for seat one, Steve Hensley, and for seat seven, Brad Scott. All right, Madam Chair, the next item on your agenda is item 11N. 11N is the Parks and Recreation Commission. We should have our camera on so they can see how big your binder is. <laughs> We're almost there. Almost there. And Chair, this is a nine member uh, commission. There are two vacancies, seat one and seat eight, and and then there's uh, expired seat two, expired in 2021, seat seven expired 2021, seat nine expired in 2021. Three names are being put forward, seat two, Edwin Blair, seat seven, Bruce Graham, and seat nine, Shane Brenner. Thank you, Madam Chair. The next item is item 11 O on your agenda. This is the Senior Citizens Advisory Commission. This is a nine member advisory commission. There are four expired seats, all expired in 2021. Seat two, four, five, and six. The administration is putting forward four names for seat two. Abriana Herring Brito, seat four, Tracy Millette, seat five, Suzanne Hickel, and seat six, Amanda Renner. Madam Chair, I just need about 30 seconds. Marcia, can you pause that? Sure, thanks, Ms. Domboski. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm sorry for that delay. We're at item 11P now, and um, this particular item, um, we have a corrected AM that we've submitted previously and already talked about. So we're going to ask the assembly if they just postpone this one indefinitely. Item 11Q is our next one on your agenda. Item 11Q is the Anchorage Memorial Park Cemetery Advisory Commission. Mr. Chair, this is a five member advisory board. We have uh, four seats that expired two in 2021, which is seat one and five, 
seats two and three expired in 2020. Administration is putting forward three names for seat one, Diane Courtney, for seat two, Robert Farrell, and seat three, Robin Platt. Thank you, Madam Chair. The next item is 11R. That is for the Election Commission. This is a five member election commission. There are three seats that have expired in 2021. The administration is putting three seats, three names forward. Seat one, Cecilia Donaldson. Seat two, Heather Clopton. And seat four, Ward Hinger. Thank you, Madam Chair. The next one is 11S. 11S is the Health and Human Services Commission. This is a nine member commission. There's one expired seat in 2021 and that's seat four. Seats five, six, and eight are vacant. Administration is putting forward three names. Seat four, Sean Degler. Seat five, Sarah Slater. And seat eight, Jerry York. Thank you, Madam Chair. The next item on your agenda is item 11T. 11T is and Ms. the- Ms. Okay. Apologies to interrupt here. Um, Mr. Dunbar is in the queue. Yeah, thank you. I just wanted to sort of circle back. Um, I believe this was spoken about earlier, but uh, wasn't it said that actually seat six is filled with Jocasta Ulp and that there was an, some kind of error here? That was the one. Um, let me just pull up my notes. Health and Human Services. Did I get out of order here? Mm, I don't think so. Let me see. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Dunbar. This is the one that um, when I had said um, we this is one we're going to be following up on and we'll have the definitive answer to you before the assembly meeting. But if the code was provided and the member is in that seat, we will absolutely let you know and ask you to um, uh, bifurcate. But for this uh, for currently, um, this one that we're currently researching. Yeah, and I'll just note that it looks like you're not actually, according to this AM, you're appointing seats four, five, and eight. And I think she's in seat six. Yeah, she's in seat six. And that's the one that I had previously said that we would be yeah. researching. Okay. So I'm Thank sorry you. I spoke. Thank you, though. Thank you, Mr. Dunbar. Thank you, Ms. Zamboski. Um, Thank you, Madam Chair. If you don't have any other questions, um, can we go to 11T? Did we already do the Arts Advisory Commission? I don't think we did. So item 11T is the Arts Advisory Commission. Mr. The Chair, this is a nine member advisory commission. There are three vacant seats, seat six, seven, and nine, and then seat five and eight expired in 2021. The administration is putting forward three names, seat five, Amy Hawkinson, seat seven, Lauren Hughes, and seat nine, V. Ray. Um, Madam Chair, on this particular item, we had submitted Tammy Hogue, and we're going to ask the assembly to bifurcate this and not move that name forward. She's asked to be withdrawn. Thank you, Ms. Demboski. Uh, Madam Chair. Sorry, Madam Chair, which name was that? Uh, that name is Tammy Hogue, H-O-G-G-E. 
Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. The next item is item 11U. This is for the Library Advisory Board. To the chair, this is a nine member advisory board. We have four seats identified, two expired, one seat expired, uh, seat four expired 10-14 uh, of 2018, seat six expired in 10-14-2021, seats five and seven are vacant. The administration's putting forward four names, seat four, Dennis Dupra, seat five, Travis Gallardi, seat six, Doug Wyman, and seat seven, Deb Bronson. Madam Chair, I know there's questions on this one, and I think if if you would indulge me, I'll have Bryce Wilbanks talk about the conflict with one of the seats that Mr. Dunbar mentioned earlier. Bryce is on the line to answer those questions. Yeah. Sure. Thanks. Please go ahead, Mr. Wilbanks. Yes, through the chair. So the uh, question regarding um, Ms. Lang, uh, specifically when looking at the notes here, I believe that on board actually has the incorrect date of expiration for this member. So I understand there's confusion with that. Is that correct? Yes. Awesome. So with that one, um, so Ms. Lang was initially appointed on June 26th of 2018. Uh, that's noted in AM441-2018. Uh, her original term was set to expire that same year in October of 2018. That was because she was filling a vacancy of a member who uh, left earlier. After that, she was then reappointed again to the same seat on December 4th of 2018 in AM 747 2018, making her new term expire in 2021. Unfortunately, on board doesn't reflect this. Uh, it's something we're working on as quick as possible. Thank you. I'll go to the queue now, Mr. Dunbar. Yeah, no, that would. Was... Mr. Dunbar, you cut out a bit. Oh, sorry. Um, in the documents you guys provided us today, it shows her term expiring in 2022. Um, and uh, yeah, and that was just, I was on the impression that she was expiring in 2022. So um, if there was an error, then, then that explains it. Thank you. And Mr. Dunbar, do you have a question on the library advisory board appointments as well? No, no, that was it. The, the okay. slangs uh, on the library board. Thank you. On a different one. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. We're almost we're almost done. We might get done on time. We're gonna try. 11 v is the Military and Veterans Affairs Board. This uh, through the chair, this is a nine member commission. Seats, uh, these seats all expired in 2020. Uh, we'll see one through eight, seat nine is vacant. The administration is putting forward nine names. Seat one, Joy Boston, seat two, Rick Castillo, seat three, Steve Childers, seat four, Stephanie Wheeler, seat five, Michael Hayward, seat six, Jonathan Orshweski, Seat seven, Michael Paulson. Seat eight, David Foley. And seat nine, Lauren Whitman. Thank you. Ms. Allard is in the queue. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, one thing I took note on this, and, and speaking of diversity and different perspectives, um, and as a veteran myself who served, I, I find the board extremely lopsided. And I believe that women veterans bring a big perspective. And I would ask the administration to reconsider putting a few more women on the board. Thank, thank you for sharing your perspective, Assembly Member Allard. We'll, we'll take that under consideration. Thank you, Ms. Allard. Thank you, Ms. Dabowski. I'm a, Madam, Madam Chair. Um, Mr. Dunbar. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so this is one obviously where uh, there's almost complete, uh, I guess Ms. Wheeler is being reappointed and uh, it looks like Mr. Foley might be, but interesting. So is Mr. Foley being reappointed or is he being appointed to a different, to a different uh, seat? Uh, 
Was he previously on the the commission? We're double checking our notes right now on Mr. Foley. Expedient's sake, I'm just going to make a note of that and I'll get back to you so we can get through the rest of these boards in the 14 minutes we have left. That's okay. Sure. No, I, yeah, I just uh, well, I wanted to ask a question about this too. Um, I, I know that th this board uh, and commission, you know, takes um, ownership of um, the uh, Memorial Day uh, celebration. And wait, is it Memorial Day or Veterans Day? I always get the two confused. Memorial uh, Day. Yeah, it is Memorial Day. Fourth of July, they do. Right, and there is, you know some institutional knowledge uh, i guess i was just wondering did, did a number of these people reapply and weren't selected or did folks just not reapply or not know to apply um that's that's sort of what i'm what i'm curious about because i'm seeing you know almost all of them not being reappointed go ahead uh, mr dunbar the uh, there wasn't I, I couldn't see where anyone reapplied um, and this is where on board is, a, is falling a little short with some of the records that uh, were in there. I think it's perhaps just some of the uh, condition that we're facing. Some of it might be just uh, COVID related where there was a period of time uh, where there just wasn't a lot of activity happening in person. Uh, and through the chair, Mr. Dunbar, um, Mrs. Williams did attend the meeting the military veterans affairs meeting that is held here in this conference room and invited people to reapply. Okay. Yeah. And I'll say I, I missed that particular meeting. I have been coming to these meetings in the past couple of years. And I'll say this is, this is one of those uh, commissions that is sort of particularly thankless. Uh, you have to do quite a lot of organizational work to put on those events. Um, and so people like, I'm just disappointed that people like Pam Beal, for example, are not, able to and bill huber are not able to continue serving so i i don't know if that was because they just got burned out which uh wouldn't surprise me um but uh, i i guess you're appointing the entire board if there are any vacancies in the future i think some of those folks would be worth circling back with and trying to convince them to get back on the board thank you madam chair uh, chair thank you we did um speak specifically to uh miss beal i don't i didn't uh, Ms. Williams did not speak. I don't know if she did to Mr. Huber. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Graham. Thank you, Mr. Dunbar. All right. Thank you, Madam Chair. The next item is 11W. This is an item that the assembly bifurcated at the last meeting. Uh, all the names were, were approved for the Anchorage Community Development Authority Board, but the assembly held Stacia Green for further discussion. So we'll entertain uh, questions, and I believe Ms. Graham is re ready to answer any questions with related to the ACDA Board of Directors. Mr. Constant? Yeah, thank you. It just was this simple question of the person being replaced was appointed into a seat for a finance professional, a banker, and I couldn't grasp from the material submitted how uh, Ms. Green met those qualifications, so it was important to figure that out. Uh, thank you for that question, uh, Mr. Constant. Uh, the code says that they can fill a finance or a business um, seat, and she definitely has that business acumen um, as a as a business owner. She has sales experience. She um, owns a business. She's a um, has a Bachelor of Arts in Economics from UCLA. And Mr. Travis Frisk it will be filling the, the finance seat on that board. Any follow-up, Mr. Constant? No, I, I, I think I just have to go back and read that code section. Uh, thank you very much for that information. It's helpful. Thank you, Mr. Constant. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Madam Chair. Now we're going to skip down a little bit on your agenda to item 11AA. 11AA is the platting board. 
Mr. Chair, this is a nine member regulatory adjudicatory board. We have uh, four vacancies and one expiring seat. Vacancies are seat one, five, eight, and nine, and seat three expired in 2021. Administration is putting forward four names. Seat one, Rick Castillo. Seat three, Jana Weltson. Seat five, Ryan Mormon. And seat eight, Zach Young. Madam Chair, the last uh, border commission that we have on the agenda is item 11 A B, I believe. Uh, this is the Urban Design Commission. To the chair, this is a nine member commission. Seats one and three expired in 2021. Seats five and eight are vacant. Administration is putting forward two names for seat one. Edith McKee and seat five, Mark Anthony Cox. Madam Chair, that is the final boarding commission for this walkthrough of the assembly's agenda for the 11 9 meeting. Thank you, Ms. Dembowski. Do assembly members have any other questions? Yes, I have one. Go ahead, Mr. Constant. This is yeah, this is an internal procedural question that I'm going to ask the clerk to contemplate. Um, I am wondering if there's any way for us to take all of those items that are in the 11 and as we open the meeting and get into that section, poll members and ask if they have any objections to any specific nominees. If they do, then keep those items separate, but move the rest of the items back up under the consent agenda in such a way that we don't have to do a hearing for each one of those items. So it's kind of a tactical move to save us lots and lots of time. Um, I'd be happy to talk to you about that, Mr. Constant. Right, so we can work that out separately. Thank yes. you. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Thank you, Mr. Constant. Do members have any other questions? So I would add one last thing before we adjourn. Go ahead, Mr. Constant, and then um, yes, go ahead. The biggest gray area that I see in all of this is that there are. There's been testimony here in this hearing that members who we're currently serving and maybe up for reappointment. We're notified, but there's no way for me to grasp whether or not that in fact happened in a specific case to that specific individual. And I struggle with the idea that folks were told that they can reapply. They should reapply when they thought because of the way that the website looked that they didn't have to reapply because they had two more years or a year or more on their term, but the data was so scrambled and so I don't know I don't want to ask the administration to share with us all the communications that were sent out to those people because who has the time for that but, but I'm hoping we can get some information to help us understand the methods by which people specifically were told in particular the ones where the website had information that showed them continuing to serve but the resolutions that appointed them didn't that to me is the area that's most concerning. And so because there are a lot of good faith people who may otherwise have applied had they known that they needed to apply and particularly had there been a document on the website that they could look at that showed that their term was expiring. But in fact, the website didn't. And I understand that the resolutions are the documents that are the law, but um, I just I have concerns about that specific issue. Um, Madam Chair, may I respond? Uh, yes, go ahead, Ms. Zimboski. Um, thank you, um, Mr. Constant, through the chair. I, I really appreciate um, that comment because I think we all want to encourage community members to participate and help them in that process. And as you noted, the data was very scrambled in some cases. I mean, frankly, when we looked at it, we couldn't rely on onboard. So staff was has spent tedious amounts of time, just an enormous amount um, going for, back to every boarding commission and pulling every AM appointing folks to make sure that we were in alignment. 
I think moving forward, since we've gone through this effort over the past three months to try to sort it out, I think our data will be much more reliable. And then once we get everything inputted and corrected and onboard, then that system will be able to um, be accessible to, you know, the assembly and hopefully everybody will just get everything aligned. But the other thing that we're instituting is now that we're through this process, we will have an internal process by which at a certain time in the year, those seats that are coming up for expiration that year, we will generate a note, an email or a letter to the board and commission members and say, hey, your, you know, your term is expiring in October, you know, maybe it's in June. We ask you if you're interested in continuing your service to reapply through this portal. And I think going forward, that's exactly what we're trying to do is set up a process by which it just becomes, you know, rudiment, it becomes route that people are notified. Um, the other thing we're trying to do is we're, we're trying to ensure that all boards and commissions are adequately staffed and that we'll have an opportunity to um, alert people and the chairs of each board and commission. Hey, these are your members that are going to expire. Can you please make sure that, you know, you bring it up and let them know. So we're going to try multiple routes of communication with folks and then we're going to have um, uh, an, an annual push for boards and commissions through social media and the municipal website through um, the community councils to try to alert people to when you know it's time to apply for boards and commissions where they can find information and how they can apply so that is going to be a, you know a long-term strategy but that's that's our goal because i think we share the same concern that the assembly has shared with us that they want to see boards and commissions fully um fully filled and they want to make sure that people know where they can go to participate if they choose to thank you thank you Ms. Dombowski any follow-up Mr. Constant yeah not really just I still have some things to weigh on this but I appreciate the response and I had prayed we were already doing that but clearly we weren't so thank you very much thank you Mr. Constant uh, next, I have Ms. Allard and then Mr. Rivera. Ms. Allard, and we just have a few minutes left. Oh, sure. Thank you very much. So it's kind of well along those same lines that Mr. Constant was referring to, Ms. Naboski. My curiosity is when the new administration came on board, Mr. Berkowitz or Mayor Berkowitz, was there any, is there any documents or anything that shows like like past history of of administrations where they brought new people on board and and filled seats or, or maybe their time didn't expire but they were still replaced because it is up to the mayor do we have any records of showing that so we could see any sort of pattern or even with the last administration uh with acting mayor quinn davidson by any chance it, is that a question to the administration Ms. yes question mark yes okay question Ms. Dembowski or Mr. Shanigan? Uh, Ms. Graham actually can answer that question. Ms. Uh, Graham? Yeah, through the chair. Um, Ms. Allard, the website was not updated um, correctly in some cases by the previous administration. It's not always easy, so I'm not blaming anybody. It is very cumbersome task. Um, but yes, to answer your question, there are some instances where um, some uh, directors did not put uh, names forward for uh, for confirmation and so people were serving uh, against code and just to tag on i think directly to your question miss allard um, we did find some of felix's old binders i will just say and those notes were very helpful so we did find some notes and some information on previous administrations who was put forward who was not going to be put forward so we did find some of that information um and it you know again it's just it's been a long time since mr rivera was in that position and i think um since then i don't know that the same level of organization was employed so it's just been a few years and we're just trying to catch up and we are trying well, thank to thank you Sorry. And we are trying to follow a very specific process. Thank you. I know that um, and kudos to Mr. Rivera. He was very organized as a chair. So I would find that, um, yes, it's probably probably fell a little bit um, 
behind the power curve when it came to updating after Mr. Rivera left. So thank you. I appreciate your response. Thank you, Ms. Allard. And a final question, Mr. Rivera or comment? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I appreciate the kudos. I was actually in the queue just to give a little bit of historical perspective. Um, so, uh, like I stated earlier, when I came into the Berkowitz administration in 2015, uh, one of the duties I was assigned, among several others, was helping out with boards and commissions. And it appears that much like um, the Bronson administration, um, when I came in, um, boards and commissions were frankly a mess. The previous administration um, did not have any type of organization to it. And so um, uh, probably had the same similar feeling um, which Ms. Williams and Mr. Shanigan and others uh, in the Bronson administration have uh, where we're, you know, we're just trying to get things organized, figure out what's what, which seats are actually vacant. And so I really do appreciate all of the work um, that has been done and hope for um, some type of um, systemize, systemization so that you know in the future we're not having to recreate this wheel again and again. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rivera. And before we adjourn, just a final question to Ms. Domboski as to when um, mm -hmm. members might expect to see the written responses concerning some of the questions asked today and any other outstanding questions um, from the administration. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So uh, the letter that responds to all of the written questions uh, will be forwarded to the um, to the assembly uh, this afternoon. I'll just finalize it and get it to you. And then uh, the written questions that we've um, that were asked or the questions that were asked during today's uh, work session have been noted, and we should have responses to the assembly on those by close of business tomorrow. Great. Thank you, Ms. Zimboski. And thank you to the members of the administration, um, Mr. Shanigan, Ms. Graham as well, um, for your for being here today. And um, it is 3.03 .03 and I don't see anyone else in the queue. So we are adjourned. Thank you for joining. Thank you.